Today we're going to do an installation video on how to install an air dog. Uh, this is actually an air dog 2 unit, however the air, original air dog installs basically the same. Uh, when you get your package, you're going to go over what's going to be included in it. Uh, on an air dog 2 or you're going to have this is going to modify your fuel basket that picks the fuel up out of the tank. This is the mounting hardware that hooks the hoses up to the pump and to the VP44 or CP3 injection pump. Then you'll have a bag that includes mounting hardware that bolts your uh, air dog to the, to the bracket and the bracket to the frame rails. You'll have wiring harness. The smaller, smaller hose like this is for the return line that goes from the air dog back to the tank. And then you'll have half inch hose that uh, provides new fuel line all the way from the tank up to the VP44. All right, the first thing you do during this installation process is split out the bolts. You'll have four uh, hex head bolts and four nuts and, and split washers that go with those. Uh, you'll take this mounting bracket. This is what the pump actually mounts to. And then this is the back plate that'll mount it to the frame. The back plate uh, that mounts it to the frame actually is, is uh, indented here so that the bolt will slit, set down in there flush. Uh, the bolt goes through. We use the bottom four holes on most applications. However, it is drilled so you can set the pump height up higher if you need to. Uh, this, this is a spacer that goes in between the bracket and the uh, mounting bracket for the pump. Steven will show you how this goes together real quick here. It's really a, a very simple installation. Uh, it simply slides through just like that. Then you'll put your lock washer and your nut on the back and, and do that four times to have it mounted. Okay, once you got the bolts through there and everything hand tightened, you'll use a 3 16 Allen for the back screw here. And then it's a half inch nut on the on the front, just a half inch wrench, and tighten them down as tight as you can get them. One thing I forgot to mention here is that the top of the bracket, the tall portion, this is going to go above the frame. You're, you'll have two holes at the top, and then one hole down here at the bottom that'll actually connect to the other side of the frame. After you get your brackets all tightened up, uh, the next step is to mount this pump to the to this bracket system. Uh, first thing you have to do is take the two filters completely loose uh, so that it'll fall on. <clears throat> the writing or air dog to set up will actually face out so you can read it the entire time. There's actually a portion on here that says engine that's written in here also then and that faces towards the engine at all times to just to make it to where you can't mess it up. The bolts that you're going to use for this setup are, are these small bolts here. Uh, 3 16 Allen is the wrench size. 7 16 nut goes on those. These will actually drop in from the top like this. You'll see them disappear because it's countersunk so the head goes down in. This will stick through. Then, then it'll come down through here. You'll put the nut on the outside. I'll uh, have Steven show you how to do this. As you can see, we've got the air dog too uh, mounted to the brackets. Uh, our bolts had slid in from the top. We put our nuts on there again. This is a 3 16 on top, a 7 16 wrench to tighten it up. Uh, you just snug everything down. Uh, this back bolt here is a little hard to get to. You can slide it in fairly easy. Uh, we use a T-handled 3 16 on this back bolt uh, just to make it easier to get to than the, the socket style Allen head. As you can see, we've put our filters back on. When you put your filters back on, put them on hand tight, you know, just a good, good firm turn. Uh, don't have to bear down, get it with two hands or anything like that. Usually that gasket seals up really good. The next step is to pull these red tabs out. Usually we use needle nose pliers just to get behind and grab those and pull them out. Uh, you have two on this side and one on this uh, far side. Uh, the six fittings that we're going to use are located right here. Uh, these actually just screw in and then your push lock screws on the outside of those. This is the small one. Of course, the small one can't go in a big hole, so you can't cannot mess that up. When you're installing these fittings into the pump, the, the JIC, the rounded side here, always is going to point out. So it's going to screw into the pump like 
like so. And then of course you tighten it down. Then your small one is gonna, the JIC side on the small one's gonna point out. It's gonna screw into this side. And then you're gonna have the other fitting with the JIC here that'll screw into the far side of the pump over here. The two wrench sizes you'll need to tighten these up on the, on the big bolt is a 7 8 inch wrench and on the small one you're looking at a 7 16 inch wrench or you can use a socket on either one. Okay, we're going to start with removing the tank from the truck uh, on your newer common rail trucks, the old four and a halfs and up. And on some of your 24 valve trucks you're going to have to drop the tank to do any tank modification or put the draw straw in. So we're going to start with what you need to disconnect first. This is the filler neck is the larger tube and then the vent tube is a smaller one. You'll need to disconnect both of those. Up here on top of the tank you can see there's the uh, pressure side and the return side lines there in the cap and then there's an electrical connector there also. I'll show you those a little bit more in depth when we get the tank down. What we do here is we use a transmission jack underneath of the tank. There's two saddle straps on a Dodge. They're here and here closer to the front once you have your transmission jack underneath of the tank and you've got the tank secure and you've got all connections off the top of it then you're okay to go ahead and drop the, the guys tank. here in the shop just want me to let everybody know that it's a whole lot easier on a dodge to drop the tank if you've got the drive shaft out of it say hi squirrel howdy people <laughs> 